Um, one thing that I like about the free software is the, the sort of effect on the user skill um, and the user understanding of what's going on, like because of that decentralized nature, because you're kind of more in contact with the concept of source code, the free software tends to kind of educate you a little bit more about how software actually works. Like it, it, the computer becomes less of an appliance and more of an ecosystem that you can actually interact with. To, you know, to the extent that we have free software in society, the free software ecosystem is going to end up being a more robust ecosystem. It, it's going to distribute the knowledge so that there's kind of many people who are able to, to do good work in the area. And I think like this is something that even even like within the proprietary uh, ecosystem, from what I understand, the proprietary software companies actually kind of end up using a lot of the free software and hiring people from who have been working on free software because uh, that's that's kind of how people are learning a lot of the stuff like you can learn the stuff at college to some degree but also actually just having an ecosystem out there that uh, enables people to learn stuff right is... yeah i think one of the quickest things that happen whenever people start using free software linux is they start getting familiar with how actually everything works and you know especially nowadays when we live in the you know year of the ipad um you know people are becoming very like normal people are becoming very disjointed for how you know from how technology actually works so it's sort of you know people used to have the idea that oh kids these days you know they're just going to keep getting smarter and smarter when it comes to technology but now you know in the day of like angry birds and fruit ninja and that's all people do on computers um, you know, people don't really understand like the core, like, you know, how, how the internet for, for example, I don't even know how the internet works. You know, I have a website, I do SSH, I have all this stuff. I don't really understand how the internet works. There's a lot of technology knowledge that due to the fact that we have these very monolithic, like th th this kind of these different strata of, you know, extra layers separating us from how computers actually work. People don't necessarily understand how you know the core of it works until you actually are on like a free operating system or to, until you can develop yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, and I think it, it ex I, I think there's value in having a society and a culture that generally has uh, that distributed expertise, like that isn't yeah. just like you know everyone kind of slaving away at some job and then using appliances provided by, from someone else. But yeah. uh, but people who can actually build things and do things um, because, you know, a lot of the a, a lot of the sort of big things that happen when, when you get some genius that builds some new thing that comes out of a culture of people generally having those abilities. Like you yeah. look at, you know, even like you look at the early Macintosh, like why was that possible? Well, it was like, why was it possible for, for these two guys in a garage to build a computer company? Well, it was possible because there was kind of an ecosystem of electronics around and yeah. there was distributed expertise. And so you kind of, it's a good thing for a society to have a lot of technical knowledge distributed throughout the population. And so right. I think free software does help with that. Yeah. And one of the things, you know, that especially I've experienced on YouTube is, you know, sites like this, you know, when it comes down to it, people want to know you know, how computers work. They want to, you know, people get on YouTube to learn how to make, uh, you know, bread from scratch and all this stuff. You know, that's something that I, I think generally, generationally, especially in the post-war era, people have sort of lost a lot of the organic contact with, you know, how cultures used to work beforehand. Yeah. And, and I, I, I like free software for that reason, because it is this organic uh, technical culture that, yeah. you know, not everyone has to be into it, but you know, if you have it easy to get into the same way it's easy to get into baking or woodworking or uh, or so on. Like it's it, and if you have a lot of examples around and, and a lot of people doing stuff and a lot of source code to read and so on, it, it makes it. Yeah, it just ma it makes your culture more organic uh, and healthier in a way that I, I think is important. Um, and this this goes into a lot of different areas. You kind of want people to have. You know, rather than a culture of consumers, you want a culture of creators. Right. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, in the ideal world, there is the artisanal programmer. You know, we have, you know, we used to have blacksmiths and people who had these 
you know, very particular specializations. And it's not to say that generally people won't have knowledge of this, but, um, you know, I think we're moving, well, I'll put it in contrast to, you know, nowadays there's the idea that everyone is going to, we're going to send them all to coding camps. They're all just going to have this superficial knowledge of uh, computer programming or something like that, where really that's not how it happens. It happens from, you know, people uh, actually, exp you know, what do, do, what do I want to do with a computer? Um, and just figuring it out themselves. For, you know, I was drawn partially to free software, not because of the freedom itself, but because I wanted to be able to customize my computer. There were a lot of things that I wanted to have very efficient. And, you know, these are usually what draws people to free software just because it, it's a platform for all this other stuff. And I think a lot of people who want to increase tech knowledge or something like this uh, should be more focused on, like, technology can help you do what you already want to do. Uh, because really, at, at the level of corruption, I mean, really, if you're using technology to use technology and not to do something else, I think you're really wasting your time uh, yeah. in that. I, I think it's it, it has to be identified as a tool, not a thing to play with, <laughs> yeah. um, although it's fu it's fun to play with when you're doing it for, you know, some utilitarian purpose. Um, that's the enjoyment of it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, as with anything, right, you play with it a little bit and you fool around with it and it's kind of interesting and eventually you have enough understanding of the thing that you can start using it for important stuff you know that, that's again true in any in any field it basically has to be possible to play with stuff and to understand it before to actually get to that point where you have people who uh, can do useful novel work even for themselves like it has to be possible to you know if, if you have a bicycle it has to be possible to just fool around with it and change the tires and change the wheels and change the drivetrain and repair it um, yeah. Even and if you don't really have to, for it to get to the point where that really becomes useful. Yeah.